you're looking to drum up interest about an event that you're hosting, whether it's in-person or virtual, Facebook can help. First, you need to create a Facebook event page, which we will show you how to do. Then we will also run through the two ways that you can promote your event page to either build more awareness, get more eyeballs on it, or probably what you really want to do, get more event responses. So let's jump in and I'll show you how. Before we can promote our events on Facebook, we first have to create the event. What's not clear right away is that I'm already logged into a specific Facebook page and I'm just in the main facebook.com feed section. So within this view, you should find events on the left-hand column. In this case, I have to click on the see more dropdown under suggested, and there we see events. Now, since I don't follow anything with this specific dummy page, it's just recommending a bunch of stuff near me that I don't care about. So ignore this part because we need to look over here and create a new event. Since I'm already logged in to the page where I want the event to live, I don't have to change anything. But if you manage several pages under the login, you can click down on this arrow. There should be a drop down, and you can choose which Facebook page you want to create the event for. By default, it's pulling in my Facebook page main banner image, but go ahead and edit this image to better fit the event you're trying to promote. But for now, I'm just gonna name my event. Very exciting, I know. Then you can choose the start date and end date and the times of those start dates and end dates. So this video is gonna go live on Monday and we release our videos at 6 a.m. Central. Normally, you're probably promoting an actual event, whether it's in-person, webinar, those sort of things. I understand for a YouTube video, it doesn't really make sense, so whatever, I'm gonna leave the time as is. But Facebook is asking for what I just talked about, in-person or virtual. Just to see what it looks like, I'm gonna choose in-person first. There you can start typing in the actual location, potentially find a Facebook page for that location. If not, you can just manually enter in an address. But I'm gonna choose virtual, because this does give us a few more options. If you want to promote a Facebook Live event, here's where you can clarify that. Most of the time when I've used this for clients, we have an external link. This is where people can register for an event, whether it's a free webinar or any sort of event where they need to buy tickets. This is just a link for the last video that I did, so we can ignore that. But put in the link there, add in some details, and there we see a few other settings to add tickets in a different section, potentially add co-hosts. If I choose market your event, you can choose a specific category of what the event is. So when it's recommended in this section in the background, Facebook will try to find users who could be interested in your event. Whatever, just gonna pick one here. I skipped over the option to set an ad schedule for a repeated event, and then just some additional settings for your event. I realized I had to go back up, I actually have to put details, because now the create event button is there. I'm just gonna create it, and now this event is live. So this is a way to start organically promoting it. I'm going to X out of here. But let's talk about the first way that we can start promoting this event with ads. And the first option is going to be directly from the event page. We see the option here to boost the event. Again, if you manage multiple accounts, make sure that you're choosing the right ad account up above. But first, you can add a description. And there we see the ad preview has updated. The default image is going to be the one that you used for the event. Since I never changed it, it technically still defaults to your Facebook page banner image. But since I went up to edit options, I can choose to crop the image or change the image for your ad. Scrolling down, choose if it's a special category. Odds are it's not, but here's the limited way that we can see the audience options to target for this boosted post. Of course, Facebook is defaulting us to the Advantage Plus audiences. Don't necessarily want that. There's little audience details like location and age, or you can look at your custom audiences. Not much here. Odds are you want something a little bit more robust. So I'd go to create new, Here's where you can start building your own audience and looking through detailed targeting. So this way is definitely gonna try to push more reach and a much broader audience. Facebook flat out tells you, if you wanted the advanced targeting features, go to Ads Manager, which we're gonna do right afterwards. But then you can go down, choose your ad schedule, go ahead and update your budget, select your pixel, don't use this anymore, don't have a website anymore, verify your payment method, and then we can publish. While it's still under review, we can go to Ad Center and check it out. You're gonna get some minor details here, but I just wanna let you know, this is one place to exist since we're creating it from one of our Facebook pages, but I always prefer to look at the more details with an ads manager. Because even though we created it via the Facebook page, you can still edit that campaign via ads manager. If I go in the campaign, look at editing the ad set, here's where we can go down and get more details in terms of targeting our placements, editing it just like a normal Facebook ads campaign. So if you like more control this way and are used to this traditional setup, that is the second way that you can create an event ads campaign. I'm gonna turn this one off. Now let's start from scratch. If 
first you need to go up to create and since i forgot i was at the ad set level i'm going to create a new campaign for event ads you have to choose the campaign objective of engagement because one of the goals of engagement is to get more event responses so that is our option let's click continue now i'm just used to manual setup that's what i'm going to go with I click continue again at the campaign level update your name clarify if you're a special category if you want to use a campaign level budget or set up an A-B test, that's totally up to you. But then we start to see the differences for event ads at the ad set level. You would want to go in, update the ad set name, but the conversion location is an important part. It's going to default to messaging apps, but we want to get people to engage on your ad. Because if you read the description, it's about interacting with a post or event. And then for engagement type, we want to look at event responses. And then for the performance goal, we have a couple options maximize the number of event responses people letting us know if they're going to go to the event possibly not if you just want people to engage with the post about the event sometimes that can build more awareness and organic reach or you can look at maximizing unique reach or just overall number of impressions i want people to show up to my event so typically event responses is going to be my number one choice choose your optional cost per result goal in this case cost per event response then we're scrolling down is a more detailed way to set the ad schedule for the event as well as the daily budget. I'm just gonna choose the day before the video and I'll just update it till later in the day. No worry, I'm gonna pause this thing anyway. And then scrolling down again, there's your locations. Here's where you can get into the nitty gritty of all the detailed targeting, location, choose your Advantage Plus audiences, switch to your original options, and then keep going down to either choose the audiences that you have already uploaded, your lookalike audiences, choose detailed demographics if you're reaching a new audience, and so on and so on. If you're fairly new to Facebook ads and you wanna learn more about targeting options, then you should watch this video first. But for now, I'm gonna click next, and then we're gonna look at creating our event ad. Make sure you choose the right Facebook page. This time, right from the bat, you can customize an image. You can choose or upload whatever image you want, add in your primary text, you can add up to your five options if you want to. Now for destination, we're not sending people to an external website. We're choosing the Facebook event that we already created. So you can start creating the campaign and ad set before you create the Facebook event. You just might have to save this in a draft, go and actually create the event and come back and find it. Since I only have the one created, it's easy enough to find. But you can also just paste in the URL of the event, like I just did. And whenever anyone clicks on the ad, they are going to go to the Facebook event page. Any of these additional tracking really won't apply because we're not sending them to an app, we're not sending them to the website, we're all sending them to the Facebook page where we're tracking those events anyway. So any of the additional parameter settings aren't going to apply. Nothing's external. I wanted to scroll back up to show you that there isn't a headline option. Our headline is going to be the title of the event that we created on Facebook. And if I'm scrolling down again, notice that we cannot change the call to action button. And really there's nothing more that we need to do. So one thing I do wanna show you, exiting out of this, Going back, I wanna choose both campaigns and look at the ads for both of them. I'm gonna edit one first. This is the one that we just created versus the boosted one. They're gonna look the same. It's just that I've used different text, I have a different image, and this was an Advantage Plus feature I left on. I wanted to show you this to show you that it really doesn't matter how you set it up. Whether you boost it directly from the page, you can come back into Ads Manager and essentially edit it to make it look exactly like one that you would create directly from Ads Manager. It's really just which option you prefer that you're most comfortable with, or you know that you can just get it up and running quicker. But if I X out of this, you most likely want to see performance after everything goes live. Let me head back to the campaign level. You'll see our main results will be event responses. Cost per result will be per event response. But if you click on the columns button, this was an engagement objective. So maybe you wanna look at overall engagement. And besides just your event responses, what type of reactions and comments are you getting? In addition to your overall impressions, clicks, CPM, all of that stuff. But the default one we were looking at was just overall performance, and that is gonna have your main two event columns that you'll wanna look at. Now remember the event response within the ad was just noticing that they're interested. There are certain things you wanna look for, like if they click on the external links that were part of your event, it's not gonna be the same thing as an event response. So still monitor if you're seeing an uplift in the actual event signups that came when you started promoting it via Facebook ads. But other than that, you're all set. If you have any other questions on how event ads work within Facebook, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. 
If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.